Okay, hey, I'm Tom. Uh, I'm Anton. Uh, you probably were waiting for Yevgeny. Uh, we're, we're just using him to, to trick you coming here, <laughs> and then, then we show up. <laughs> but he, he just got ill and, and uh, uh, didn't make it, make it today, and, and uh, we're, we're he here to fill in. I'm sure we'll do fine, better than fine, awesome. Demos uh, will work. Yeah, and uh, you can wish him well on Twitter. Uh, okay, so uh, agenda. Uh, we're gonna talk, th this talk will be like half and half of demo and then talking about continuous delivery. Um, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and then um, I'm sure one of us will notice. Um, it's gonna take about 35 minutes and, and we have like 10 minutes for a discussion in the end. Yeah, normally it takes an hour, but we probably will skip some details. Yes. Um, let me think, anything else? And then we'll finish. <laughs> yeah, and then, then the <laughs> uh, outro. Uh, the demo will be quite complex. There, there is so many systems, so hopefully the demo gods will uh, smile on us today and uh, everything will, will, will work. Okay, uh, to get started, um, we start with the FedEx process. I'm, I'm sure you've heard about FedEx, and the analog or that, that we bring here is that in, in, in FedEx, you, you package your stuff, you drop it off uh, at some office, and it gets transferred and uh, from point A to point P, probably going through some other points in between, and it gets delivered. And uh, these steps of uh, transparency, you can uh, log into a system, check where your package is, et cetera. Uh, it, could be the same with software or yeah, Java you could, here. You could package a web archive, test it, someone tests it, approves it, uh, someone pushes the big red button to deploy it, and yeah, maybe you get the profit of that. Yeah, but uh, there, the process is fine, but, but most of the time you have a lot of like open questions, like uh, which, version, which version do you have in production? Like uh, some apps have a version in the HTML you can check either in a, in the footer or inside, uh, some don't. Then you can go to the file system, figure out which node is running what. Uh, there, there's no clear way there. Let's ask the guys. Where How do you find your versions? How many of you knows which version is currently in production? Well, uh, just your, your, your systems. Your systems. More, I mean, more or less people know. Okay. Uh, how did it get deployed there? Was there a uh, redeploy button in, in uh, Tomcat or Anscript or were the servers brought down? Was there downtime? You know this about your production installation? So, some of you do. <laughs> those, those are three of you. Uh, or uh, how did it get there? Was it like uh, emailed or uh, uploaded to FTP or? Fa or fax machines with, <laughs> with the source guide. So there are all kinds of questions, like uh, starting from the source repository to the uh, uh, production yeah. version. Um, all right. And uh, those questions arise usually when it's already late, right? Yeah, when, when uh, something fails and then, then you, you need to figure out what is where and then which, which version. If, if FedEx fails, uh, probably your package will arrive tomorrow or uh, the truckload of um, packages will arrive later. When software fails and it's, it's an online system, uh, the business guys won't be too happy about it because there's uh, so many users affected at the same time. Uh, all right, how do we fix this? We have to identify the problems first. Yeah, we're, we're gonna talk about like two main problems. One is failure, when something goes wrong. The failure of the process itself. Yeah, because, this, uh, Failures will happen. Um, and, and then the, the other part is downtime. Uh, like, like these, are, these are the problems, uh, like why, why you get these uh, screens. Um, all right. So yeah. Uh, we have a silver bullet. Yeah, this is silver bullet that, that we're talking here about is continuous delivery. Of course, it's, it's not a silver bullet. It's, it's uh, just one of the uh, ways how to minimize risk and uh, get you those answers and um, uh, and the, the main aspects that we're gonna talk here 
is uh, automating stuff, everything that's like possible, and not automating stuff that's not possible. Uh, recording every step, so when something goes wrong, you'll have the answers to those questions. Uh, find the culprit. Yep, uh, test, and then recover when failure happens. Uh, we're gonna be using uh, here uh, certain software platforms. Of course, the, the same uh, effect can be done with other platforms. For example, for orchestration, you can guess what we're using. Uh, any guesses? Any guesses? <laughs> uh, Jenkins. <laughs> uh, for a delivery manager, we're, we're uh, okay, I'll uh, actually take that one by one. So Jenkins, this is the continuous integration server. Uh, we will use, use this as an orchestration platform. The reason why we're using Jenkins is that we've been using Jenkins or the already for a while. Yep, and we're grown accustomed to, and then all our it, like internal stuff runs on Jenkins uh, for uh, actually delivering or deploying the archives. We're going to be using a tool called LiveRebel. It's the commercial delivery manager. Yep. Uh, so we'll be using this tool to deploy the applications, undeploy, or run updates uh, with, with different kinds of strategies um, so that users won't see downtime or, uh, or such. And, and, and you can query environment like status about your deployments. And why LiveRebel is that they're, they're not very good um, open source alternatives. Uh, it supports many app servers, so Tomcat, Glassfish. WebLogic, JBoss, WebSphere. JT. Yeah. And, and it has some cool features like no downtime updates. And it integrates with open source projects. Um, and uh, another reason is, is that we, we built that software. Shameless uh, plug. Yeah. Uh, the third one is Nexus. Uh, this is an open source commercial uh, artifact repository. Uh, you can. Uh, put your archives up there, your deliverables. It has authorization, it has authentication, uh, et cetera. So the, the high level view of uh, the environment we are using uh, is that Jenkins orchestrates uh, all, the, all the workflow and it talks to Nexus and uh, LifeRebel, which in turn talks to Tomcats to deploy the application uh, and the, the final Final environment, let's say so-called production environment, is uh, is kind of consists of uh, two Tomcats, uh, which are behind the load balancer. And uh, as I mentioned previously, so he, here Jenkins is orchestrating, Nexus holds the artifacts, LiveRebel does the deployment. Um, you you could be using other tools here. Uh, we, we actually will be like the the pipeline that we built is, is somewhat complex. Uh, but uh, these are the tools that you can use today to uh, build a continuous delivery pipeline. Like there is, there is not like one single tool that will do, do it for you. But uh, this mix, for example, will uh, will work for you. Uh, let's get to it. You want to yes. explain this? Yeah. So we have several stages in the pipeline. Uh, like the the first stage is to build the actual artifact. Uh, propagate it through the pipeline, uh, through different stages, uh, QA, uh, some staging maybe. Um, and this is the high level uh, view of the uh, pipeline uh, in regards to uh, the, the tools we are using. So <clears throat> the pipeline phases uh, are configured in uh, Jenkins. So those are Jenkins jobs actually. And Jenkins communicates to the repository to store the artifacts and, and propagate them. So we have several repositories, uh, and, and the tested archive goes from one repository to another as, uh, as the status changes. And occasionally, uh, Jenkins can uh, communicate to the delivery manager to deploy uh, the produced artifacts. Question? No. Ah. Just right. <sighs> OK, demo. Um, OK. Here's my inbox, uh, crucial for the demo. Uh, here we have the uh, Jenkins. Uh, we've already built the pipeline. Here you can see the steps that Anton just mentioned. There's, there's the build step, there's the 
deployed to testing. We're going to have some automatic, automatic tests uh, run on that uh, testing uh, instance. Uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll start with uh, quality assurance. Uh, this will succeed. Ooh, one second, the resolution is a bit all right. Uh, then we'll clean up some tests. It's, it's not necessar necessarily uh, needed here, but for the sake of demoing, it's in a very good position there. And some of the stages of the pipeline are triggered automatically? And some are manual. And in the end, we'll, we'll uh, deploy to production. Uh, this is a uh, build pipeline uh, plugin uh, that you see here. And uh, all of these are uh, Jenkins jobs. Yep. So you're identifying your pipeline here based on what you think of the Jenkins job number. Um, have you come up with a way to actual, actually present the version name and the artifacts inside the pipeline so that people can uh, Not to the top level, but as we go through the demo, there, there will be uh, locations where, where you get uh, more detailed uh, views. So you can trace where the version came from. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and of course, here I, I have it configured to, to just show uh, one of the builds. I can go back in my history and show the last five. So this is me at the hotel here. And this is the latest one here. And just to, I'll just show one at a time for demo purposes. All right. Uh, so this is what LiveRebel looks like. Uh, I have three servers uh, connected to this uh, instance here. There is the uh, two production servers, production one, production two, and then there is the uh, uh, testing server. And we're we, too lazy to build the staging. Yes, it, it's, it's uh, very similar to, to testing. And uh, um, okay, then we have the Nexus. Um, here we have the uh, repositories that Anton mentioned. So here we have the test repository. Sorry, let's start with build. Build repository, test, QA, and uh, release candidates. Um, and then we have the demo application, which is a chat application. Hello, world. Uh, you can actually come here and chat if, if, if you want to. Um, OK. Uh, this chat is using Redis behind the scenes. There is a different Redis instance for testing and for production. Okay. Mm. Let's start the pipeline. I start the pipeline, or th this is what we'll do. I'll, I'll start the pi pipeline in the background. It will run fairly fast, but we'll, we'll go through each uh, job here to show which kind of plugins we used and which kind of settings we used to, to build this. And how to chain. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, usually this would uh, start automatically when, when you do a uh, commit and push, but here we, we do it manually. Uh, if we check the uh, uh, build project, then it's, it's, it's fairly simple. Let's see. Okay, so we, we have a repository that we check out the code from. Um, then what, what we're doing here is we're, we're using Maven uh, to uh, build the artifact. There are certain parts that, that I will skip right now, but uh, I'll, I'll come back later on. And then uh, the uh, top level, or, or the, the uh, last, last target is to deploy this artifact to our uh, build repository. So basically you get a snapshot. Yeah, and it goes to the build repository, meaning that, let's see if it made it here in the meantime. Yes, it's there. This is because they said we, we already started the pipeline. Um, and then next it, it triggers deploy test and it uh, will send the build number with it. So that we know that we are actually testing yeah. in the next stage. So for example, if, if I open the pipeline, it's, it's already here. And I can continue manually, but we have some steps to check out now. For example, deploy to test. And let me open the configuration again. So first what we do here is that we're gonna get the uh, archive uh, from this uh, build repository here that we deployed this to. 
So uh, artifacts are in the repository. These jobs work with artifacts there. So it, it, it doesn't use some local versions because you, you probably have 10 slaves there uh, and uh, you want other people to be able to access it too. So a repository is a good choice here. Um, next, get this, I uh, want to explain right now. And next we have deploy or update artifact with Live Rebel. So it's gonna take this archive that you just downloaded from the repository and you will deploy this artifact to the testing server, test one. Um, yeah, some advanced options that I won't show at the moment, but so it fetched the artifact and deployed to uh, testing. So let's see if, if that actually happened. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me open servers. Here's our test server. There's one application, LR demo B214 and it's deployed there. Uh, let me see if I can prove it also. A bit slow. It's LRDMO B214. B2. Sort of. Wow. Capital B. Okay, let me think for a second if, well, LR demo 8018. Yeah, so this is our uh, test chat version. Um, oh, and I actually opened the new, uh, one second, I'll do some. Okay, so this is the production system that I uh, showed you in the beginning. And this is the testing server that I'm showing you right now. Let's see, okay, uh, the new feature that will, will come with this version that we want to get to production is that it would support this as smileys. So the test version has this. And, and also who's online, like a list of uh, users, live users. So we want this functionality to appear in this other version that I showed in the beginning. Okay, so it's in testing. Um, now let's, let's check the next steps. We run the automation tests now. Mm-hmm. Okay, the automatic tests. Um, we didn't implement any tests here, but uh, you, you get the idea that uh, you either have unit tests or some function tests running there, and uh, let's say these tests pass. What happens now is that we're gonna take this artifact and propagate this to our test repository now. So if I go to my test repository, I have a new version here. It's B214 and it's uh, automatic tests pass, so we can, we can take this to uh, QA now. So it's basically a sanity check so that QA doesn't have to test all the versions, but only those that are stable enough. Yeah. Uh, today I happen to be the head of QA. Uh, I just got an email from Evgeny and he's telling me that they have prepared an environment for me to test. Let's check this environment out. Okay, I, I see the new features. Uh, let me just check the main feature. Okay, it's working. Um, and I approve this build uh, to go forward in the pipeline. And Actually, you can check the trace as well. Oh yeah, so there have been cer certain steps that I haven't shown but uh, I've, I've also uh, aggregated all the changes of this uh, update to the program. Yeah. So that you know which is the revision yeah. uh, that this version was built from. To, to a file yeah. that, that you can check. So for example, this is the revision with, with this hashtag. It has only one change set and uh, the automatic test passed. Okay. And as the manual tests also passed, I'll propagate this. So I clicked, clicked on the link and what's gonna happen now is that this quality assurance uh, success is triggered. Uh, let's see what this job does. It will uh, take the file from the uh, test repository. It will mark that manual tests passed. 
I just verified that. And uh, sorry, this one here. And it, it uh, let's say, may, oh, deploy file. Okay, it's, it's, it's here. And it, it will propagate the file to uh, QA uh, repository. So, if, yeah, shoot. So, you're pulling the or whatever it is you're testing down and pushing it back up. Is that, instead of using a promotion model inside the Nexus, um, is that because it's not supported in the free version or what's the There are several ways to do that. Either you can use the, the features from the repository or you can just do manual steps, whatever repository you are using. Maybe you have your own custom custom Ivy repository, whatever. Yeah, so we we went for uh, solutions that don't require any like specific features of this like tool chain that we're using. So yeah, like you, you can build the same stuff with uh, most of the tools out there and uh, we, we don't want to lock into any of uh, these. So, so this is like this uh, like generic approach. Um, all right, so uh, yeah. uh, so we have this in the uh, uh, QA repository now, and let me go back. I lost myself for a second. Where was I? Oh, QA success here. Okay, and um, done here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, and the next job is uh, begin deploy to production. Ooh, and uh, let's see what, what this uh, job is doing. Uh, it gets the artifact uh, from the QA repository here. And it marks it as a release candidate. It, yes, and it deploys this to the release candidate repository and it sends an email. So this is something I forgot to show you in the, uh, like the previous manual uh, step that I had to take. But, but we, we sent a notification that everything went well. And again, uh, now I'm actually the, uh, the guy who, who's uh, taking decisions as to which version goes to uh, production and which not. So I get another email that there's a release candidate that passed the uh, automatic tests, the manual tests. If I want to, I can take this to production. And again, uh, I have a trail here that uh, showed where it came from and uh, what, like, are, have the tests passed, uh, which revision, which change sets are going in. Uh, Again, this uh, last step is manual because you might not uh, want to put this to production or staging, and uh, you have the choice here. And uh, this is the business decision, actually. Yeah, the, the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment is that in continuous deployment, the every, every build that uh, succeeds, the tests pass, uh, gets deployed. Continuous delivery is that the the last step is, uh, it's, it's a business decision. Do we want this new functionality to go in or not? Uh, so this is why we have the manual uh, step here. And uh, also we had manual uh, QA team. All right, so let's uh, put this to production. Uh, and let's check the, what's, what's different about this production job. Ta -ta -da -ta -da -ta -da. Okay, so it downloads from the uh, release candidate repository here. Mm. Okay. It will uh, use live rebel for uh, deploying. And, and here I've, I've chosen these two servers here, production one and production two. These are the servers I, I showed you before, and these are behind the load balancer. Uh, and now let's go to the actual application. I'm a bit lost here. Uh, oh, this is, the, this is the test. Uh, where's the other one? Let me just go through. So, yeah. Uh, 
And let's see what's, what's happening in the background. Uh, because in the library we'll is that, okay, there's, there's a task going on. Um, and the update strategy that I was using here. Scrolling restart? Uh, no, I think I went with the uh, full, restart. full restarts. So th there are different options. So here, here we're using uh, as a delivery management library. So there are different options. How, how do you want to uh, this WAR files or your application to go to production? I chose full restarts. So it's restarting the servers. Uh, Okay, let me just close the, uh, close the wrong tab. Um, it's doing it one by one, so uh, the users will still hit the uh, live nodes. This is why the application was actually still running. Yeah, and okay, this step went well. Let me think what now. And we have the new functionality in the production system. Okay, did we uh, skip anything? No. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. 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 How do you insert a manual stepping up pipeline? Um, here we're using the build pipeline plugin. And build pipeline plugin has this uh, this option, or build pi pipeline plugin uh, by default is manual. So the question is how did I get the automatic ste steps? So uh, I, I was using the build para parameterized, parameterized, pa parameterized build plugin. Yeah. Okay. Well, basically, you have to specify some parameter right at the beginning of the job, uh, and then you can use it through the configuration. I think begin QA send, sends one. Okay. Um, I'm using the source build number from the uh, environment. So, so this is the number that I've been passing along from, from the first build from, from uh, one job to another. And then I take it from the environment and add it to the uh, URL. And also here, to, to start the build, I'm, I'm using the uh, API of Jenkins with, with, with certain parameters. Yeah, yeah. So as, as the, this, this is not like a one tool uh, for continuous delivery as there's like uh, uh, many, many different tools uh, working together, then, then you can get the breadcrumb for actually like multiple locations. You can check your uh, uh, Nexus logs and, and see the propagation happening, or you can go to the uh, uh, library, uh, the, one second, the uh, history, and, and you can see what's been happening here, or you can take the Jenkins uh, log files or you can check the uh, text files. Trace. Yes. Yep. So in the examples you've shown here, you're using the, the Jenkins build number. But it seems to me your artifact server, you're usually going to have like a major minor version dash build number or something like that. It's how just a notation. I'm sorry? Yep. It's just a notation. The best practice is just how you number the, the sure. versions in, in your organization. Sure, but Um, if uh, like there, there's uh, different solutions uh, how to get like custom build numbers there, uh, you, you can have your major and minor, uh, but but uh, like uh, scripting them uh, will be a little bit more complex. Uh, but 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 you can have that. But but here we again uh, went, went with the uh, simplest solution. We take the build number, which is like easily identifiable and uh, etc. 
Uh, yeah, Ma Maven uses this notation of uh, snapshot, uh, which has the uh, timestamp there. Uh, you can tie your uh, build number to that uh, specific version and then propagate that version through, through your uh, repositories, for example. Great. Yeah, or there, there, there are other options also. Um, okay. Basically, you, you, you want to make sure that the second step is actually using the artifact from, from the previous step, not something else, especially if uh, you have concurrent uh, builds. Right, well, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You're going to have to be careful about the management of where that stream is coming from and where it downloads, right? Yeah, when, when, exactly. when, when you have uh, multiple branches, uh, it, it gets uh, like hairy in, in very many different departments there. Like if, even with the jobs, like do you duplicate jobs or uh, what do you do to, to handle your branches? Um, probably you would have more test servers also. Um, depending if, if they have like one database or multiple and uh, uh, this will be very uh, application specific. Um, okay, uh, what we didn't cover here, database. So uh, very often when you, when you run the updates, you, you need also to uh, manage your schemas and stuff. So this, this simple uh, demo here, it didn't cover that and uh, that's, that's another like, step for you to actually add when, when you build your pipeline. Uh, either you use some uh, liquid base, some, some tools out there, but, but you need to uh, make your uh, jobs more uh, like fat. And, and actually, uh, tools won't help here as such because you have to. Well, you have to have your migration scripts. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, they, they won't be automatic for you. Another thing is configuration and environment management. So th this was done all manually here. We configured the Tomcats, the ports, the uh, uh, et cetera. So you could uh, use something like Chef. Chef, Puppet, uh, something for provisioning the servers, uh, et cetera. And tests and monitoring. So our, our tests were very simple. We, we actually didn't have any tests. The, the jobs <laughs> just pulled the artifact down and we said yes. Uh, and then monitoring. Um, these are all things that, that you need to at your uh, actually one important pipeline. step is rollback. Yes, if, if, if something goes wrong. Well, with rollback, you have the option. Do you want to upgrade to a new version or roll back to the old one? Uh, here, here we have, uh, depending on your process there, uh, LiveRebel has a rollback button that, that you can use to go, go back to the previous version. But if you want this into a process, then you probably start the process with a with a new version where, where you have the bug fix, fixed. Okay, these this open questions that we went through in the beginning, uh, now, now we actually have like answers. Like what exactly is in uh, production now? Uh, we have multiple locations that, that we can check. Uh, we, we can check Liverpool, uh where we see the status of the different environments. Uh, we can check the Jenkins log and we can take that build pipeline view and see uh, which was the last one deployed to production. Um, how do you the trace yeah. file to check the revision? Yes, and then which change sets went into. Uh, we know how, how it was deployed. Uh, here we use server restarts, uh, not, the, not the other options. Um, how was it packaged? Where did it come from, etc. cetera? So, so you have the full, full trace there. So it's, it's all very nice, but it's, it's really like difficult to, uh, to automate uh, like the updating of your uh, production system with, uh, with a bunch of tools and then making it automatic. Uh, so, so this is the, the other tricky part. The first tricky part was to get everything working together. Uh, now, how to get it in? Because uh, changing a process is really hard. Uh, people won't be happy. Uh, in the beginning, uh, because they, they have their ways, ha have they done it so far? They have 20 step documents or 100 step documents, what they have to do. <coughs> so the solution is to sneak it in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you, you, you already have your Jenkins and, and uh, a bunch of plugins there, and 
you can start modeling your uh, workflow for, for updates. You can start with uh, your testing servers or uh, I actually run a local Jenkins instance uh, on my machine and when I want to like uh, automate something, I usually create a job because Jenkins is like enterprise cron today. Um, so you can sneak it in by having your uh, workflows there, uh, the simple ones, and then you can make, make them more complex and complex over time. Um, and uh, in the beginning, you will have manual steps there, but uh, you can automate them one by one. So how to get it in? The seat. Okay, conclusions. Uh, Jenkins jobs, we were using the jobs for the uh, workflow uh, presentation, uh, representation. Uh, Nexus is our uh, sync point. So if, if the, there are long running workflows, so this here happened in, in like 10 minutes. Usually it takes a couple of days. So you, Nexus is, is your like sync point uh, where, where you see uh, your, your artifacts and stuff. Uh, to deploy the applications, you can use Liverable. Uh, you can manage the apps, the versions, the environments there. And here, the uh, manual flow was with email. And to wire it back in, we used the REST API of Jenkins. And we, we, we track with the uh, scripts and text files. Uh, if you want to mo know more, you yeah. can find it uh, on our website. We have also some brochures to give out uh, yeah, that at goes the hall. Like, uh, step by step, how to actually build uh, the pipeline with yeah. all the technical details and configurations. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, it was great to be here.